Rust Hunters log, job code 27AC3, location Black Harbor, Persephone reporting. Several pieces of AI have gone missing, and we're now looking for three children, Chiara, Margo, and Raphael, whose disappearance the Elder Council believes is related to the disappearance of the AI part. Legends of automatons washing ashore and taking children away. And here most of the parents seem to think that they just skipped town. <laughs> wow. People are really indifferent out here. It's like they've lost the spark to care, even for their children. The kids haven't been seen for several segments. I've seen people in the call worry more when having lost their pets for an hour. Well, maybe I can't blame them though. This cold, wet, dark place would have anyone lose their soul. I suppose the kids look cheerful enough though. At least on this photograph. All of the musicians too. That's nice. <sighs> Gonna take a lot of crack if we're going to have to tour all the towns here just to look for something no one really seems to be missing. And yet... Something seems to be coming back to me when being here. Something's familiar. Was I really working at a newspaper? K M X M E X R A. Interesting. Let's see where this will lead. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. I quickly show this photo to Persephone. What the hell does that mean? Name? K-I-X? Hmm. Looks like the first letters of their names. Yeah. That seems very obvious to me, but I admit, my brain takes a moment to catch up. Huh. I think it's funny, I... No, it almost looks like it says Chimera. Chimera? More like Kixmexra. And I look at the photo, what was it on? What were they doing on it? They're just hugging each other. Hmm. Seems to be very close. You get a funny feeling it's weird because... I do remember somewhere there was a story. Okay, I'm going to ask you to roll three dice. And this will be in a post roll. It's a sanity roll. Six. Eight. Eight. You're fine, but there's a shiver running down your spine at the moment, which you find hard to explain. It kind of washes over you. And as you see him, he's like standing completely still until you regain yourself for a moment and you feel... I briefly reach into my pocket and fiddle with the photo. I take it out and look at it. You'd see me looking at it at this point. I just start saying to myself, almost to myself, Chimeras. Remember there was this... You ever hear about Chimeras? Aren't they like... a mythical being or an amalgamation? A joining of things. I look over your shoulder at the photo. What's on the photo? The photo is of an old-looking tower-like structure. Just standing, taken from the front. Beyond it, darkness. Does Chimera mean something to me? No. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about that. Chimera? Do you think they're actually... There's a relevance to that? I shake my head, the weird feeling I just had sort of easing off, and I put the photo away. No, of course not. Um, so, at least we know what the kids look like. Does he usually do this? No. He's not easily shaken, I'm guessing. No. Hmm. I look at you and, uh, are you alright there? I'm fine. Just, uh, <laughs> able to have a little flash. But it was nothing, honest. You know how it is, sometimes. Not very often, though. No. Because I recently had one, too. Just when we 
just now, just looking at the room. I remember it. I remember working at a newspaper. Newspaper? Then I was probably bad at it. <laughs> I let out a very low, throaty chuckle. Newspaper. I think Bright Town did have a newspaper. Her. Oh, this was in the newspaper. It was more of a magazine. More of one of those gossip things. Well, I don't know. I don't remember. <clears throat> but, right. Well, anyway, fine. Just don't let it distract you. I'm sorry I let it distract me. Anyway, let's let's focus, focus. Let's focus. I've got a picture. But I still can't help just reading that inscription. Always together. Is everything all right up there? I yes, guess. it's fine. Um, thank you. I think we've done everything we can here. Okay. I, uh, I, uh, notice I'm holding an empty matchbox in my hand that I'm fiddling with. And I, I lightly tap Persephone on the shoulder. Put it down. I, uh, I put it in my pocket. <sighs> thank you. Is it alright if we take this photo with us just to, for identification purposes? We'll return it, obviously. You'll return it? Yes. Okay. That's okay. Um, do you need anything else from me? Um, have you ever heard the word chimera? No. No. I frowned a little. But it wasn't important. Don't know why I said it. Please. All right. All right. Um, thank you. This has been very helpful. Uh, we are going to visit Fenris as well, I think. Um, do you know if he's home at this hour? I am not sure. Uh, I mean... I, I, I haven't spoken to him, uh, to be honest. Oh. We heard rumors about him and stuff like that. But uh, what did you hear? Well, he's, you know, like you. Like us? He's yeah. an investigator, or uh, from the core. Yeah. Oh, I see. So not from around here. No, not from around here. Mm-hmm. Might explain some of Kiara's curiosity then. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, ask like one more time is there anything else you think we should look into before we leave? No, just if you find him bring him home safe. Anything you would like us to tell him? That I miss him very much. Good. Good. Thank you. Yes, I make to leave, but unlike some of my leavings, I actually this time pause for a moment to give a respectful nod to the woman. Mm -hmm. I do actually care about people who care about that sort of thing. I respect that. Good. As you walk out and you start making your way to wherever it is that you're going, a boat starts to travel alongside you uh, and you see your driver uh, saying hey people I've been told you need my boat oh yes just time passed that quickly I suppose we've been having lots of fun mm. good I mean we can see this other guy later but let's maybe go investigate somewhere we can actually investigate for a change well we don't even know if he's home a bit tired of <clears throat> asking the same questions again and again. Exactly. Let's... So, yeah, we'd like to go to the trash compactor site. Okay. Uh, you can have the boat. I'm just going to be around here. Don't worry. Uh... Those are the instructions I've been given. All right. Do you uh, feel like driving this? If not, I can help you out. That's okay. No, I think we've got it. You sure? Yes. Okay. You just lift it up and down and you move it around and... I'm sure it's not too hard. I sort of get into position and get ready to drive this boat. Okay. Just bring it in one piece. Okay. Sure. I uh, bite my lip and I think uh, I feel a sting of enthusiasm. Like, this is fun. This is a bit of a, a rush almost. There's electro candy there. Electro candy? Which is what guides the creature. Well, it's what you should give it after a trip. Oh, oh. You know, as a reward. As a reward. Mm, sure. It, it, does it have a name? Um, no, not really. 
creature. Coming. And I uh, uh, nod and I say, mm. and I jump down. <laughs> okay, you jump into the boat. It kind of rocks violently for a bit. Uh, you step in, uh, and you're there. What are you guys doing? I shall do my best to start this procedure going. Get this creature to move in the direction. The pole is now straight up, pointing upwards, and you can see on the top the lantern. I grab the pole and remember that's what he was doing. Place it out and begin to try and direct this creature. As soon as that thing comes down, you hear like a rumbling from below the surface and the boat starts to move slowly and as you continue to push that down the boat starts to move faster huh uh do we actually know where we're going yes he just pointed it to us i'm pretty sure it's just this way i laugh to myself and i put my hands in my pockets and i feel the stuff that i've collected so far uh sometimes you're not very observant are you persephone no (laughs) <laughs> I laugh again, they're very gruffly. Uh, what would you do without me? You start making your way, and at, at, at the first moments, like it's it's a bit tough to to handle this thing. The pole is quite heavy, uh, and you realize that it's a bit swingy. So the creature starts to wait in a in a weird way. I'm gonna actually have you roll for this to see if you can manipulate the pole in such a way that. It makes for a pleasant trip. Okay, that's pretty good. So, in a short period of time, you actually got a handle of it, and you realize that you move it to the left. You can basically steer the creature to go to the left. You have to do it just very slowly. And if you need to go faster, you can just pull the pole down. Yes, I thought to myself that it looked as simple. It was simple. I'm quite good with my hands at observing things, unlike some people when I look and smile a little as I watch Persephone, probably idly doing something. I'm uh, at the front of the boat and I'm, uh, oh, this is going well, and I'm holding on to the edges of it and I'm looking down at the creature. But it is, it is cold, so after a while I have to re- take back my hands and put them in my pockets. Great. You make your way towards the platform with all the trash cans and as you arrive there you realize that the place is super dark there's a lantern that is not lit up and far away you can see the lights from the village and it's basically a platform so you'd have to step onto it what are you guys doing i continue to get us in safely so that we can get off the boat and uh, investigate this area Mm -hmm. you don't I uh, eagerly go down to this little uh, collection of uh, electro sweets, whatever we call them, electro treats, and uh, I, I, I drop it into the water where I think the creature is. Okay, you drop it into the water, and you see that it sinks. What was it? What were we supposed to do again? I shrug. I look down. Does it not eat it? Did it not well, take it? Well, it's it's turned off. You realize it's it's not like the one that he held when he fed the thing back then. Something you should probably do with it to huh. light it up. Okay, I look around for... I remember now the uh, person lighting up the, uh, the fungal light bulbs around. He had a device, did he, that they clicked? I look around advice. for the device. You don't find a device. However, you do see that there is a series of markings in the electro candy that you're holding. Uh, and it seems like it's instructing you to twist it. Ah, I do that. You twist it, and it's it's a bit forceful at, at the beginning, and it, it takes a bit of strength, but you do it, and you can see inside a bulb that breaks, and then it sparks. And it comes alive, and you can see the light coming in, uh, from inside. Oh. And instantly, with that low buzzing sound that you hear you can see some sort of tentacle just slapping at the surface from in front of it 
<laughs> oh, you want this, don't you? And I hold it out like above it, like the. I watch Persephone and sort of grunt. Persephone, hurry up. And uh, I, I drop it. You drop it, and as soon as it touches the surface of the water, you see a tentacle just lashing out, grabbing it, and basically submerging it. It disappears. Ooh, that's... Ooh, that's slightly disturbing, actually. It's just a creature eating. What's disturbing about that? Come on. How big are these electro treats? Uh, they're a bit this size. Okay, so we're a bit clunky to bring in my... I put one in my bag that I have around my shoulder. Okay. <sighs> as soon as Persephone is actually focused again, I go over. So, you thinking what I'm thinking. She had an AI. It wasn't working. Something was wrong with it. She didn't see it get decommissioned. No one did. Only the kids know what happened to it brought it here. They felt sympathy for it. They might have, yes. And they let it live here. Oh. Well, let's not jump ahead, but it does seem quite convenient that that was not that long ago. And maybe finally we could find something here. It'll be interesting to see if we can find the automaton. I bite my nail a bit. Ah, oh, that is interesting. Maybe we'll find Hmm. I look around at the entire building and I bring out my binoculars like is there something to look at at this? No, it's not very big. Huh. I mean, it's just it's a series of trash containers that are floating and there's this platform built around them. There's some trash in them but there's not much you can notice, at least not from here. You'd have to go in into the trash container to actually... I start slowly heading in, keeping an eye out. I'm looking for signs, the telltale signs of people. Anything okay. left behind, any things look a little disturbed. Roll your attention to detail. You will have to roll minus one die in this case, because it's very dark. Yeah, that would make it, yeah, four. And I look around in my binoculars, looking around as the ceiling, everything else. You look around in your binoculars, you see something at the distance. Among the mass of shadows that surround the whole vault, uh, because the only light really comes from the center of it, where the town is, everything else is, is enshrouded, there's a particular spot near the wall of the vault that is specifically darker. It's darker than black, let's say. And that as soon as you look across the whole expanse of a vault, you come to the realization that is probably the western entrance. Mm. And that's supposed to be a collapse, let's say. And I lick my lips and I whisper this to myself, the western entrance. And uh, I put down my binoculars into my bag and I come over to you. Now, you have found something. And that is a piece of clothing. You basically pick it up and you realize it's a sock. I look over the sock very carefully and I show it to Persephone. You have a sock exactly like that. I bring it out of my pocket. Coincidence? No. Let's... Let's go in. Mm. Further. Okay. And I start trying to find a way from this point to access inside the building. Anything about the sock? There's no blood. Is there? There's no blood. And I'm going to tell you, you will not find anything else. There's really not much to seek in this, because it's basically a big container. Uh, it's not even a building. It seems like it has been emptied quite close to uh, today. This particular piece of clothing, however, 
seems like it was stuck. So it might have been here longer, so before the trash container was emptied. Hmm. I wonder where they take all the things that they are supposedly bringing here. Hmm. One thing's for sure, there's no sign of any AI. Damn. Uh, kind of get a bit impatient. I was expecting more, and I get quite agitated when things don't go quickly. Do you have a light source? Yes. I always carry a torch, and I take it out of my coat pocket and shine it around. You find marks on the side of the container. Mm -hmm. I go over very quickly. I run my hand over the marks. Do they feel deep? Do they feel... They don't feel very deep. Mm. Do I That's think these could be made by a human hand? No. Most likely not. It's, it's not like we have steel claws, because mm. that's probably the only thing that could do that. Mm. I walk over and I see it as well. I'll scratch mark on some sort. It's on the outside. It's on the inside. It's on the inside. Hmm. Something was here, trying to get out. So not entirely deactivated then? No, it wouldn't have been. I doubt the old woman knew how to properly deactivate an automaton. Oh, that's I doubt not... they knew. It's not, it's not strange that it struggled. And I look around, are there any more of those marks? Or is, is it just this one particular? Or are there like, more of them? There's one or two more marks closer to the floor. But they don't look like that. They're just random scratch marks. Does it look like it was able to climb out of there? Yes, you would be able to climb out of it. Okay. So a service AI, one of this size, would probably be totally able to. Uh, I'm going to ask you to roll AI knowledge to see if you can get something else out of this. You roll four dice. And I have a plus one, yes, so roll four. I get a four. four. Okay. Actually, two. By the look of these scratchings, it does seem like this AI is about the size of a human being. Hmm. I'm going to tell you. And it does seem like an AI that size would probably be a service AI, a domestic AI, so an AI that helps with routine daily stuff within a household. That's the information you get. Hmm. I sit down and I look at it. I would say man-sized, perhaps. Standard service AI. I begin to move away from the building and start shining my torch around it. I start trying to mentally picture if he crawled, if it crawled out. If it crawled out, there has to be, where would it go? Where can it, could it go? If you don't have a boat, you can't swim. Where do you think they would bring it? If they, if they helped this AI, because she did say that they came back after this, if they helped it, where do you think they would bring it? What would they have heard all their lives? Western entrance. I think I spotted it, and I bring out my binoculars, and I point it out to you where to look. Hmm. I suppose we could go and have a look. Let's do it quickly and I get back onto the boat you jump into the boat and now of course you know what to do you bring the pole down and with the rum pull the whole creature starts to move the boat forwards and I begin to guide it towards the black shadow as directed by Persephone as you go forwards and you find yourself enshrouded by darkness you reach the darkest point within the vault um, and you raise your torch and you see in front of you what seems to be an entrance so the light of the torch shines further away and past the wall 
to basically shed its light on what seems to be a fence that is blocking the entrance. And a button that appears to be right next to the entrance, and that is at arm's reach. I look and examine the fence and I'm at the front of it. Do I see anything like any signs of it being opened or... Uh, it is closed. I mean, having been opened recently or uh, being... No, no holes in it or anything? No, no holes and you wouldn't know if it has been opened recently. Hmm. There's a button here, I say, from the front of the boat. I press it. Okay. You hear it. Electrical fence? I press it again. The fence opens. Mm. So much for sealed. Or rather, not much of a... Mm. But then again, maybe they built it after. Mm. She did, I think she said caved in. As well. I shine my torch around. Do things look caved in? Things look like nothing because you can't see inside. You see only the walling. You would need to delve into it. I begin to lead the way forward. As I do so, I briefly put the torch down on the boat. And just very quickly make sure my death spitter is charged up. Just in case. Go slowly. Um, don't want the, the thing to hit any debris on the way. I know. You start to go forwards, and as you turn slowly the boat, you do realize that you'll have to lower the pole to be able to traverse into the place. However, if you lower the pole, the boat will go faster. Uh, roll again. I'm going to say four dice. I'm going to give you an extra die, given that you succeeded so well. Mm -hmm. There is a four there. Excellent. So you realize as you push the pole basically down that you can push the pole also backwards. So it seems like you can shorten the length of the pole by doing this and kind of fit its length within the narrow structure of the tunnel and so making your way slowly into the darkness. Yes, I make my way forward slowly, glad that I found a little way of getting around things. I am constantly observant. I'm not concerned though, to be honest. After all, this is what we do. Anything I feel more comfortable here now than I did in sitting down, talking to people about questions. Hmm. You find yourself completely surrounded by silence. Blackness. It's almost impossible to see, aside from the faint light of the bait and the torch. Do I have any weapon at all towards guarding against these things? No? No. Alright. Um, I try to like gaze ahead and get a view of anything. I'm, I'm guessing my binoculars doesn't have <laughs> night vision. It doesn't. Um, you continue ahead in your path. And at some point, something makes the boat shake. It shakes to the side and you hear this very loud as the boat seems to basically hit something from below. The boat rocks to the side and it starts to vibrate, the surface shaking. And the creature complaining. The torch that's right in front of you is now shedding its light on what seems to be some sort of caved-in lump of steel and metal, mm. completely twisted. Um, you examine the surface ahead, 
and you do realize the path in front of you is blocked completely. Huh. Uh, I uh, sort of l lie down first on, on the boat, sort of like in taking cover almost when the first mm -hmm. impact occurs. And then I look up and I gaze out at this and I, I, I pick up the torch from where you put it down and I shine around like, is there any way people could have walked up on this somehow or is it just a complete wall? Of you look around and you find, again, as before, a surface darker than black in the shape of a hole to the side. Mm. It it's seems like a breach in the tunnel. The breach is big enough for the boat to fit. And I'd say only the boat, because you would have to basically pull your head down to be able to fit in that place. Um, any signs of it being welded open or just so sort of torn or punched seems to be wielded actually i start thinking how would we get through are we could we just all lie down in the boat and guide it through it would be even would the creature be able to continue us going for all this? yes it will be hard though hmm. how do you even make these things go backwards i don't know but we need to go forward if there is a breach well, maybe our friends are in there. Maybe, maybe. We'll have to know. I uh, I start to try to push away uh, towards the walls to, mm -hmm. to aid the boat. And I start leaning down and I remark, we're gonna have to lean down. Come on, let's go. You're helping the way. Roll three dice. Great. Those two fours will give you two extra dice, uh, which will make your roll four dice, actually. Because you would be normally rolling two to make this maneuver. Remember that you may also re-roll stuff by using influence points. Oh my god. But I do see a four. There is a four. Excellent. You lower the pole very low, and as soon as it's at head level, you push it forwards, basically instructing the creature to go in. It's a very, very narrow tunnel. And as you go forwards, you can hear the screeching and the boat complaining at every single movement. There's this cacophony of screeching sounds that mm -hmm fills the entire tunnel and as you continue forwards you hear the creature complaining and you feel the moist of the fungi that's basically latched onto the ceiling just hitting you in the face the whole thing it feels as if you're going up a slope in a way and soon enough the screeching is all you hear because the boat is out of the water. And when the last bit of tunnel passes overhead, you see the creature slowly slumping its way forwards and into a spherical, dark chamber. At this, I stop. Well, I do what you, I feel you need to stop the creature. I move the pole in position don't even know if these things are supposed to get out of the water. It seems okay, I guess. I stop it and I sort of look and I reach out a hand. Solid ground or something yes. solid? Floor. Cold. I hop out of the boat and I quickly motion to Zephany to do the thing with the treat. Like, okay, no need to bring our transport with us. Just let's investigate. Um, yes, I suppose this is how you would dock the boat with this thing. And uh, I uh, find another treat to mm. twist. You twist it, the electrocandy lights up, and you feel.
feed it, I guess. I uh, I feed it, like, yeah, carefully looking at the thing now that it's out of the water. It extends a tentacle, but it seems like it's hard for it to reach, so you need to probably go closer. I, I go closer to... I try to, like, roll it over to it. It grabs it, although it has a hard time finding it. And after a few seconds, it touches it, and it starts to drag it. Oh, this thing... It's not supposed to be... It's quite clumsy on land. Mm. I simply grunt, I've already got the torch out, and I'm very carefully looking around, investigating this new area. This is a spherical chamber that seems to be surrounded by this bit of floor. The floor is, is kind of flooded and the water that is kind of waving its way into the chamber is flooding all towards the center. The center is a hole. There's a hole and a drop. You don't know how high, but you definitely see that there's blackness below. Huh. We're on ground now. Yes. And, and in the center of this spherical chamber, in which you find, there's a hole. And there's water flowing from yes. the sides down into the mm -hmm. hole. We go to the hole and shine the torch down. There seems to be a drop about four meters, five meters, to the ground below. And what seems to be below, a junkyard. There's lots of different pieces, and bits and bobs of metal scattered around. Hmm. Something tells me we may have found what we're looking for. I look down, I see all this debris, is it the same sort of debris that we're covering up the tunnel, or is this actually genuinely wares? It's, it's metal parts. Amidst the silence, you can hear far away sounds. From down there? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Do I think it's possible to get down and not hurt myself too badly if I sort of lower myself? You have the... Grappling hook. Rope. Yeah. Yes. Right, yes, I get out a grapple magnet. You need to attach it to the death spear. Yes. So you remove the bolt that is loaded onto it. You attach the actual magnet. And instead of loading the bolt, you push back the reeling system and you hear it click. Now, if you push that, you know that the magnet will just shoot and attach itself to a surface. If you press it, hold, it'll be set loose, you can attach it somewhere, and the reel will start to extend. I do the second thing, I want to slowly lower the rope, get it attached to something down there, and then hopefully we can vice versa up here and climb down. You could let yourself down, I suppose. I mean, just uh, attach it to the side and then haul yourself down mm -hmm. holding the gun. I blink a little because that is a much better idea, but often I don't always think of the best idea straight away. And I go, yes, Persephone, yeah, that, let's do that. Well, it is a strange place. So. <laughs> Smile apologetically. Good. You attach it to the floor that is metal. And you start to slowly lower yourself. And the only thing you hear for a few seconds is the of the mechanism as it lowers your partner down into the darkness. You arrive there, your feet on the ground. What do you do? I look around, shine the torch. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll climb down the rope that you've uh, attached there for me now. Okay. <laughs> you are now down. And I do I have the gloves after all, so I can slide with the gloves. And exactly. Have I did... Hmm. <coughs> do I think it's wise to detach the magnet? Because I... 
I could just fire back up later, couldn't I? Yes. Yes. So I will detach the magnet and okay. re-establish the gun, getting it ready for normal firing mode. Mm-hmm. And with my gun ready, attach the torch onto it, actually. I've got a little modification that allows that. It's one of those small torches that could quite easily go on, just so I can have the gun ready and shine it round with my torch, watching carefully and just sort of, to Persephone, doing a little hush motion with my hand. I'll allow that for an influence point. Yes. Let's do that. One influence point spent. Nice. And um, I uh, look around, like, what is shining his light on? Like, is there any tricks of any activity here at all? There's a lot of spare parts around, uh, which seem to be AI parts. I pick one up, like a an an arm and a hand, mm-hmm. and I say, "Well, so much for the cold breach paradise, I suppose." Hmm. Looking around, I'm starting to see anything that looks slightly not completely and utterly destroyed, like maybe some sort of AI core to get some information out of it, if there is one. But no, unfortunately, not. Or like any, uh, how do people, people get here? I mean, if they... I don't think no, they've been here for quite a There's a blinking while. red light across the chamber. I very slowly move my torch in that direction. There's a gate next to the blinking red light. If he didn't have his torch, what would be the source of light here? Would it be the fungi still in, in the root? There's no fungi here. It's completely dark, otherwise. Um, I uh, see you aim my torch towards the light, and uh, I nod and I uh, start moving up to it. I move forward very carefully. I know that in situations like this, it's not wise to rush. You do realize as you start to take a few steps that the surface of the the floor is is covered in water. So you hear the steps and the splash. Uh, You reach out to the gateway and you do see this big gate and there's the button to the side. I press the button slowly. You hear the mechanism. And the door opens. Right in front of you, there is a hallway, and the lights above light up. There is something, a strange contraption right ahead of you, stuck to the wall. It's a series of cables and circuitry. They don't make much sense and they all connect to a series of lights and the lights shine in different patterns, blinking, Hmm. indecipherable. No idea what that is? No idea. Well, I think that announced our presence. I look it over very carefully. Nothing at all. I can even vaguely even guess at what it is. Like, does it look like custom made or something made by something maybe that doesn't know what it's doing? It makes absolutely no sense to you. Mm-hmm. I reach out and turn off his torch. You hear something like a choked cry coming from one of the ends of the hallway. I fall silent and I listen. Are there any other sounds? Is that a person? It sounds like... Uh, okay. So. Taking a deep breath, coughing a little, as I do. Sort of hit my chest a few times. 
and I begin to lead forwards, doing a few hand gestures to Persephone, indicating to sort of take mm. the practiced position of slightly behind me. We know this maneuver. I get my gun ready. The cries and uh, the sounds that come from down the hallway start to become more well loud, more violent, and as soon as you reach the edge to where the light fades, because the lights above start titillating and basically fading out, you see a trail of blood fresh on the floor. And as you reach the umbral, you see a body. It has no arms, but it's still moving. And it reaches out with its head towards you. And you can hear it. Help! Help me! Help me, please! Uh, I've had my pockets. If I have anything to stop this bleeding, it's losing arms. Uh, I move forward quickly and try and shine the light and, and try and find his face, his gaze, and try and get the gaze of. This. His eyes are completely lost. It seems like he's undergoing a horrifying amount of pain. Who is this? Do we recognize him? It looks exactly like Raphael, like his picture. I lean down and I try to... So cold! I try to think of what to do in this situation regarding his injuries. Raphael, Raphael, is that you? Raphael. Yes! yes. What happened here? Take me back! We'll get you back, Take don't you worry. You'll be safe. What happened here? We need to find your friends as well. He's exceedingly agitated and his, his sight is... His eyes are just turning back and it, he's losing so much blood. As he shakes his torso, you can see the blood pouring out of his thumbs. I quickly sort of reach down to my sort of clothing. I, I, I put a hand on you like, no, there's no way. <coughs> And he starts coughing blood on the floor. He's gone. <laughs> you can't help. You can't do anything. <laughs> Can you help us, Raphael? Do you, where did they go? That <laughs> way. Don't worry. You'll be safe. We have someone to get you. Just relax. Just relax. So cold. I I frown a little and I just sort of try and get his attention again and I just say, hey. Hey, kid, 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 breathe, breathe in, breathe out, the dark's not so scary. He's dead. His pulse is out, right, and his skin is extremely cold. I stand up, uh, I, uh, draw a hand through my hair. This was very recent. I don't know why he was attacked just now. I'm very silent. Move to touch the boy's body. Sort of lay it back. Run a hand over his eyes. Close his eyes. And I suppose my expression seems very neutral, but you'd know why thinking about this. I'm not happy. I, uh... Ugh. Yeah. Both of you, you will roll mind, which will be three dice. If I fail this, does it get me memory points? This is the one roll yeah. that you can't make memories about. Yeah, fair enough. I have a ten. Six. Three. Nine. Ones. Okay. That's really bad. You, at the moment, mm. you've lost by more than three times my result. So you're, you're broken at the moment. 
this is your reaction to this kind of thing. When you're broken, you're going to take a memory now of this exact happening. So you're going to write what you're seeing and you have a minus one to response to violence. You have failed, but it was not by much. Failed by one. Yes. So you're now stressed, heavily stressed. <sighs> Certainly. I uh, I look at the uh, the dead body quite clinically, as if I'd seen it a million times before. And then suddenly, I just turn to the side and I throw up. stand, look at the boy, and I see the boy standing on the edge of the abyss, and he's going to jump. That's not for him. That's not for him. And I try and stop him, and he goes, and it wasn't supposed to be. People with lives don't jump. <sighs> and I just see the darkness, and I just say nothing. Uh, and I uh, try to look at the body again and, and see if uh, his arms have been torn off. Is it like physically like pulled off, or uh, have they been cut by something? Like you'll have to roll for that. It's basically sort of like a medical examination of sorts. Yeah. At first look. So you roll three eyes. <sighs> no. You have no idea how that has happened. <sighs> well, clearly he... Oh, no human could have done this, but... I'm not sure how they were removed. I grant only now perhaps even coming back to this actual scene. I look around, I clench my teeth and I go, keep going, it's nearby. Are his actual arms here? No. No, they're not here. Ugh. I start looking around with the torch for a blood trail. Mm -hmm. Bleeding badly, where yes. did that start? Well, you may follow that trail. Mm. And as you follow that trail, you're going to delve into the dark ahead because there are no lights from here on. And you continue onwards and you can see that the puddles of water that have accumulated are still kind of like flooding this area. And at some point, you'll only hear the splash as you go forwards and start to discern the faint glow of a titillating red light ahead. And as you point the torch forwards, you'll see another gate. Now, this gate, this triangular shaped gate, there's a sound coming from behind it. It's unlike the kind of stuff that you've been hearing recently. And as you push forwards and closer to the gate, you can barely discern a melody coming from behind the gate. A melody as in being sung or a melody being made with instruments? Or not? There is singing. And also, there is one instrument playing a piano. I give Persephone a bit of a look. Margo. I nod slowly and quickly now make my way to this next gate. I'm slightly more impatient now. You're next to the button. Press the button.
the melody floods the entire compound ahead. It's a soft and tragic intonation. There's the vocals rising and the piano going along. And then slowly but surely, dimly first, and then increasing the ratatat of drums in the distance. And then that sound starts to engorge the whole ambience and it mixes with the rattling of steps. It's like a thousand steps at a time marching without rhyme nor reason across the junk filled chamber. And as you push in, you see it. The face of Chiara rising snake-like with a set of tubes protruding from her severed throat and into the frame of a horrifying centipede-like creature completely made out of metal except for some sort of drapery clothes pieces of whatever's left of the three kids it comes down crashing into the surface and without stopping the melody, without losing its fifth rhythm nor melodic structure, it starts to scuttle down at a blinding speed towards you. I have a moment where my memory flashes back. Chimera. I focus on the situation. I call out, stop! The thing does not stop, it continues to rush towards you. And if you do not do anything, it's going to attack you. I fire. Okay, roll three dice. Four dice. Four dice. Because mm -hmm. I can shoot. There is no time now at this state. We need to fire. And I quickly motion to Persephone to sort of get back. I'm horrified looking at this thing and I go up against the wall. One four. The first bolt lunges from the death spear and strikes at the torso. The severed hands that stood there completely focused on playing a horrifying and warped version of a piano fall and you can hear the music faltering, the creature shaking and its whole torso just lunging down now dragging itself and doing this horrifying screeching as the deactivated part of its corpse starts to screech against the floor and it continues to serpent its way towards you at a blinding speed. What are you doing? Can I, can I figure out some sort of weak spot on it? Um, I want to use my AI knowledge. You could. Or any model, and maybe I could recognize this, its model somehow, or um, that I know about. Well, these machines generally have a combustion chamber inside of them. So they have an oil chamber, so if you manage to, I don't know, rid it of all of its fuel in time, but that doesn't seem like a good way to do it. It does look like shooting works, but the creature is almost upon you and now it's going to act and it's going to go straight towards you now this is a combat roll so it's still contested roll so three dice yes it's three dice i brace myself as the creature comes forth fifth four five six seven i have 15, 17. If I have more than you, mm -hmm. you're going down one. Mm. If I have more than double than you, that I do, you go here, so you're gravely wounded. And if you get here, you're dead. So yeah, yeah. alright, I will lose one influence point to make you re-roll one of those fours. You can make me re-roll all of this if you want to, oh, which all, are the... All, uh, of, all of the yes. fours and the three. three as well, and so the three as well, yeah, re-roll like... them all, yes. 
Seven. Eight. Okay, you're still going down one. The creature lunges at him, and you can see instantly that it just perches and just slides down. Its hundreds of arms try to stick his clothes to the floor. Several of its arms are finishing in like a very sharp tip. So it starts to become a struggle as you fall down on your back and you start to try and wrestle with this horrifying artillery of piercing arms that try to lunge at you. What are you doing? Uh, I, I, I pick up the death spear if he's lost it there. It's with it's all in like under the, the creature's body and that's the problem. Okay, do I see anything else around that could help? Um, maybe there's a piece of like metal or something down there that you could reach out yeah, to. Yeah, I do that. I try to find something that I could... Okay, you grab something. What are you doing? I'm, I'm trying to hit it away so I can at least make his arms free to use his death spear again. Okay, uh, do roll your three dice. I remember... You're grabbing a thing and you're about to hit something. I remember standing on a long barren field. Far away there's a flag and in my hand is a golf club. I'm smacking away a small ball and it flies, whirs, spirals out at first, but I know I've hit a perfect screw ball and the ball starts to find its way back. I look up at Deranda, who had been challenging me all those years ago, as he stands next to me. He nods and he says, not bad, not bad. Right, so that is your memory. How many points? You can use uh, three in this case, because you can use two, three, or five. Let's use, uh, let's use three then. Okay, that will be a plus two, and that is a successful hit. So you hit it with this uh, thing, and the machine thing recoils and takes several steps to the side. Now, you are now basically rid of that, but you're still in the floor, and you're trying to stick yourself out of these like pieces of metal uh, that are strapped to you. What are you doing? First of all, I'm taking a very deep breath. The vision I just had of the amount of pain I could have just been in. It's almost like something was on my side. <laughs> it's coming back to you. But I roll, where's my gun? It's lying on the floor there. I roll to sort of grab it and do a sort of roll to then be in position to fire. Okay, you'll have to charge it too. Now, yeah. the creature is pointing now towards you and it screeches, interrupting the melody and then continuing as it quickly shuffles around straight towards you. It's going to attack you. I'm getting ready to give it another smack and trying to get it off balance. Cool. Okay, roll your dice. Do I get to roll all my pluses now and stuff? Yeah. Ten, eleven. I have eleven. I have thirteen. You can use influence points. I want to use influence points. Let's get this bastard. Yeah, you probably want to reel all twos and ones. Okay. That's much better. As a creature comes towards you, you hit it to the side. It recoils and starts to go again. It doesn't seem like it's going to be easy to bring this thing down. Now, you reach out to your gun. Yes. Right? As he's continuing to struggle with this, you see the creature lunging at him. You load your gun and you point at it. Yes. So, you may roll. Go for it. It's three dice. Mm -hmm. Only three dice for the shooting? Yeah. Because it's difficult to shoot? Yes. Ah, yes. I kind of feel that I could have got a better shot off, but I had to roll, I had to reload. I'm not the youngest man, my hand shakes a bit, and I get the gun in position, but my aim just isn't quite as good as it should be. Shoot it! I'm doing it! The bolt just flies away and across, 
and as the machine starts to push you towards the ground, you feel its weight on you. You're going to have to roll again. And now you're going to roll a minus one. Because it's latching onto you now. Okay. Do I still use my melee strikes? Yeah, so it's four dice. Ah, that is not good. That is a total of six. I have 13. <sighs> I I struggle and I, I, I try to give it everything I've got because I don't want to end up like that. I don't, I don't, I don't. Okay, let's go again then. That is no good. No, it's still no good. It's really bad. You're going down one. Seven. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's better. Mm -hmm. So, as she's pushing the pipe towards the chest of the thing, you can see that she's under massive pressure, and the pipe cracks, and her arms are pushed aside. A set of mechanical pincers clamp down on her, and you start to see as that thing, those like very sharp tips start to puncture her chest over and over again and you see blood coming out ah. I grit my teeth I steady my aim I get ready to fire again and then I just in a millisecond of thought and afford because it's funny I've even when these things are this horrific <laughs> can there really be I, I get ready to fire, and I do, I just yell at the top of my voice, You killed Raphael! You killed your friend! What happened to Friends Forever? Kira? What happened to Friends Forever, Kira? Marco? In that split second of waiting before I pull the trigger, is there even an indication that it's even distracted from what it's doing? Yes, of course. You can take the shot. I shoot at it. Four dice? Mm -hmm. Yes. As this is happening, the matchbox falls from your pocket. <laughs> As you hear the whistle of the bolt and the Kiara's severed head turns to the side hearing that whistle. What are you doing? I hear him calling that through this overwhelming pain that I'm feeling from these pincers going at me. And I, oh, I feel the matchbox falling out almost into my hand. Uh, and I, I, I bring it up. The photo, uh, the, showing the photo. And I'm trying to hold up the matchbox. Right in front of you, you see the fuel tank. Uh, I, I, and I see it and I open up and I like, are there any matches left in it? Yeah, there's one. Oh, please! And I, I draw the match and I cover my face to the side and I hold it towards the fuel tank. The chest of the creature bursts in flames and you can see it screeching and screaming in agony as it starts to roll around in a maddening storm of metal, fire and flesh. You're completely shaken, bleeding from your chest. I fired that other missed shot, maybe in a way I meant to miss simply because I wanted to distract. But I look in horror at what Persephone just did, thinking in my mind of all the things that could have just gone wrong there. And seeing it does recoil away, I dive over to try and drag Persephone out of behind me. And I push my feet towards the ground, get out, get out. Uh, the creature is now like shaking and just rolling around, lets out a last scream and scuttles away, losing itself in the darkness. You 
grab onto Persephone and you push her out slowly but surely towards the gate. And as you push the red button, the gates closes and you see the last of Chiara, Mergo and Raphael. You have listened to a special episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the game Nibiru, a sci-fi RPG of lost memories that is on Kickstarter right now. Have a look at the link in the description and go back the game. Nibiru was written by Araucana Media and Federico Sons, who was also our game master for this session. The music was made by the lovely Proto Yu. You can find more delicious futuristic drone at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel. Finally, a big thank you to our patrons. The show would not be possible without your generous support on Patreon. You give us so much energy, help us cover our costs, and open up time to record and edit. Thank you for listening, and see you again soon. I let the gate close, and I put Persephone down on the ground. I very quickly, like I was going to do before, tear a bit of my shirt just to quickly adjust her bleeding wounds. I say, Persephone, Persephone, what the... Are you all right? You could have blown yourself up. Oh, I'm not... I'm not even sure we're safe, even now. We are, we are, we are, it's, it's wounded, it's, it's just kids, Persephone, it's just a kid. That thing must have been rebuilding itself for ages, do you see how many parts there were? This, this must be, this must be hundreds of them. Hush, I just hush, Persephone, we get back up on top and we, we get back up. I lean into him and I, uh start stumbling, make my steps away. And I help Persephone, the plan being to get her out of here and maybe we'll come back, but I just can't help but see the kid's face and I still think something's in there. And I don't think there's anything I can do to help. There's nothing anyone could do 